you can see that I put this on a plate. Now, around the dry ice, you can see smoke coming off of it. Dry ice is basically carbon dioxide frozen. So it's a gas that's been reduced to such low temperatures that it becomes a solid. And when left in uh, room temperature, the carbon dioxide slowly comes off. Now when you put this in water, uh, you can see the gas coming off at a much faster rate because uh, it's floating through the water. Now, I put this on the plate using tongs out of a plastic bag. I will not handle this. This is no joke. This is no over safety precaution that you frequently see people take. This is reality. If you touch that with bare skin, you're probably going to touch something that is so cold it would almost burn your skin off. Not something you want to mess with. It's very cold. It's colder than regular ice, which is freezing, meaning 32 degrees. I'm not sure the exact temperature of this. But here we have a sink of water. Here we have this. Notice that it's been on a plate for a while. I'm going to demonstrate something with the plate in a second. How cold does it get the plate? But before we do that, let's slide this in. If it'll slide in. Put it from the side. You see the gas. This is harmless gas. Unless, of course, that's all you breathe. But it's heavier than oxygen, so I can actually put it on a plate. See? And pour it off. The reason you'd also know it's heavier is because it flows out of the sink and into the sink next to it, which means it doesn't float off into the air. It's heavier. It will dissipate over time. But this is the effect. Now the ice itself remains as cold as it ever was until all of it is gone. In the meantime, it is chilling the water. So here, you can see just a bunch of gas spilling over and nice little hollowing effect. And this is carbon dioxide, so not something that you would stick your face into and breathe, but it's not strong enough or concentrated enough to cause us any damage. Carbon dioxide is what comes out of our mouths. It's also very thick. The word is opaque. You cannot see through it. Opaque. The opposite of transparent. So let's see what the ice looks like now if I can find it. It's not something I want to touch with my hands. There we go. There's the ice. Right. All right. I'm going to put it back in. Let the reaction continue. Now, 
one of the laws of science is surface area. I don't know if I'm saying that technically right, but you can ask your science teacher. The greater the surface area of something, the faster the reaction. And if I can get it up again, get this, find this little piece of down here. No, nope, not able to do it. But I want you to take a look at the, I can clear away it just long enough. You can see the bubbles. Here we go. All right. So first things first, this plate's getting pretty cold, not because of the ice, because of the water. So there's the water. I'm going to lower this into the water just so you can see the bubbles coming off. And this is getting very cold for me to handle. But we're going to finish this by chopping the ice into smaller pieces. Because one of the laws of science is that the faster the more surface area there is in an object, the faster the chemical, or in this case actually physical reaction, happens. And the reason is because of that is it's a lot harder to pretend you're a, pretend you're a little soldier, a little tiny soldier with a sword trying to hack up a big block of ice. That big block of ice is a big block of ice. It's going to take you a lot longer to do that. There's not very many angles you can attack it from. But if you take that big block of ice and you chop it into little tiny pieces, well, as a soldier with your sword, you're going to have plenty of different ways to get at it. The result is a faster attack, or in this case, a faster reaction. Now, faster reaction is going to be more violent, and simultaneously, the ice will melt faster. All right, so let's see what happens. This is very cold water. And I'm only doing this because I understand tolerances. See a lot more bubbles now. It may not seem like a lot, but there are a lot. This water is getting colder faster. direct contact with the ice. Now the ice is stuck to the plate. So there's reason for that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pull the plug on the water. replicating an experiment like this. You need dry ice, you need a sink, you need water, you need a stopper. 
We need an adult to handle the dry ice. And handle the dry ice with tongs. Even using a plate is not recommended unless you know what you're doing because the plate itself can shatter. Uh, the tongs should hold the ice and drop the ice directly into the water. The tongs should be used. The reason I used the plate I did is because it was plastic coated and is shatter resistant. The room temperature plate with dry ice on it could very well shatter. Let's see what we got here now that the water's going away. Less water, more room for smoke. And look at that. 